All right, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick for this week's trading recap from June 28th to July 2nd. Just a note, the markets will be closed on Monday, so a shortened trading week in the upcoming week, just Tuesday to Friday. Obviously, uh, this isn't the most fun trading recap to give because it was a losing week, lost $947 or 2.2% of the account, but you have to be 100% transparent if you're going to do a trading YouTube channel, and you actually learn the most from your losing weeks. So instead of uh, kind of hiding this, I I'm going to steer into uh, the, the loss and really kind of deep dive into what I could have done better this week to improve my trading for next week. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, and then follow me on StockTwits, Twitter. Those are the two that I post the most, uh, and then Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. If you're coming here for a specific stock, timestamps for each of those will be in the comment section below. Um, we did close some notable winners, GNK up around 8% and ATNF up 4%. Both of those were larger winners that came back and hit stop losses and then notable losses uh, around 5%. I always keep my stop losses around 5%, keep the losses as small as possible, and then let the winners run. Quick agenda, uh, we'll go through a market outlook. So take a look at the indexes, SPY, QQQ, uh, IWO. Um, go through the TikTok trading challenge, week 26. So we've reached the halfway point to that. Uh, review the watch list from last week, the breakout watch list. Uh, share the stocks that I'm currently holding in my portfolio, and then break down those past trades for you. And quick plug, uh, Webull is giving away a free stock between $3 and $300 if you sign up for their platform using the link in the description below. And then if you just deposit $5, you get another free stock between $8 and $2,000. Uh, so $11 right there for a $5 investment. Uh, I have Webull as a, another trading account. I, I have a bunch of different trading accounts, Webull, uh, TD Ameritrade, and, and I do like Webull's charts. So uh, give them... Uh, or check, check them out. Quick disclaimer, anything that I talk about is not financial or stock advice. Please do your own due diligence before trading. This is my trading journal, basically. Um, trading comes with financial risk. All right, market recap. So indexes, they kept moving higher this week. Uh, S&P 500 up 1.7%, NASDAQ 2.6%. Big, big tech is getting a lot of the money right now. Uh, you could see Amazon coming out of a little pullback. Uh, Google breaking into new highs. We'll get into a couple of those. Uh, Dow Jones up 1%, but this I IWO, this is the kind of a growth stock ETF, and that's usually what I track mostly with my trading, and that was down 0.4% this week. So uh, as some of the growth stocks that, that I've been trading pull back, uh, that, that caused some of the losses this week, but uh, we'll, we'll get into all that. But indexes push all-time high, liquid tech stocks soaking up the money, and a lot of pivots failure. So the stock goes over a buy point, gets 2 to 3% up, and then reverses and really starts to flush. We saw a lot of those quick reversals in, in the growth theme. So uh, got to be a little bit quicker to take some profit, move stops to entry, take your risk down. But let's take a look at some of those charts. First, we have the S&P 500. So really strong day on Friday, breaking into all-time highs, uh, nice uptrend. We had this one Friday where we closed under the 50-day moving average. That started to look really bad, and then we just reversed and then shot higher. So uh, with the big, big tech names getting the money, you're, you're likely to see these indexes continue to rise. NASDAQ, uh, which was in trouble between uh, April uh, and kind of like the May area, where we saw all the reopening plays get, get the money. Now that has shifted, tech is back in, in control here and really strong move, nice uptrend. It's staying above that eight day exponential moving average, which that, that's a clean, clean uptrend. Dow Jones, uh, not as strong, not at all time highs just yet. Uh, we had that mini blow off top on May 10th, but I mean, still in an uptrend above the volume shelf here, above the 50, the 20 and the eight doing all the right things. Then let's go to the IWO, the uh, Russell 2000 growth ETF. You can see this is nowhere near their all-time highs that was put in February when trading was super easy, January and February. Since then, it's gotten pretty difficult. You had that, that flush in March and April. Things starting to turn around in May, but still a choppy environment. Uh, I mentioned those pivot failures are, are really tough for a breakout trader like myself. So 
We're, we're trying to get the momentum going. It, it looks like things are firming up here and we could be over this volume shelf and kind of clear skies ahead. So it, it looks like good trading is right around the corner, but for now you still have to be kind of quick to lock in profits. So those are the four indexes I wanted to cover for the market recap. Let's do a quick TikTok trading challenge. So every week I put what I make on TikTok into a trading account. And then from my breakout watch list that I post on Sunday morning, I let you guys vote from four different setups to how we invest the money each week. Uh, last week we were choosing between NEO, CHK, SUP, and LEDS. And unfortunately, most of the votes, 39% went to LEDS. That was down 17.4%. This was a pivot failure. It looked like it was getting out. Um, we'll cover this in a little bit um, in, a, in a later slide. But uh, yeah, so unfortunately, down week for the TikTok trading account, down 4.25%, which is down 33% on the year. Um, and myself, I was down 2.2%. I'm only up 4% on the year. It's been a tough trading year for me. All right, we'll go over a couple of these charts in a second here, but wanted to look back at Sunday's watch list. So every Sunday, put out a breakout watch list between 10 and 15 names that have breakout potential near pivot buy points. And uh, last week, really strong, 88% win rate. This week, not as strong, only 33% win rate, four winners, eight losers, average gain loss of minus 1.4%. So didn't pick the highest quality stocks. A lot of the stocks that, that were on that watch list were... Um, oil and gas stocks, and all of those took a plunge Monday and Tuesday, so really tough to get back from that. But thankfully, none of those stocks hit their buy points that we covered in the video, so they just didn't make any trades. But NEO was the big winner, up 11.8%, almost 12%. MRNA up 6.5%. Uh, and then we'll cover NEO, LEDS, and SUP um, in a second here. All right, so first, NEO. So this is one that had a pullback over 50% from the high to the low, which I don't usually trade stocks like that. This was only 54%, so it wasn't like a 70% pullback or anything too aggressive. Um, and, and we got going above all the key moving averages, kept just pulling back lightly to this eight day before bouncing on heavier volume and a stronger move, and then had this one, two, three, four day uh, pivot through here where we said if you're if we're breaking over Thursday's high, 46.59, that was gonna be the buy point. We hit that on Monday. Uh, it was up like 2% when it hit that buy point and continued up. I think it closed around 9% up on the day. Continuation Tuesday, continuation Wednesday, really strong move. And then Thursday and Friday, we checked back to that eight day exponential moving average, bounced a little bit on that. So that's good to see uh, buyers stepped in right at that key short-term moving average. So this one looks strong um, if you're holding if you bought in here, you probably took some off into the 20% move, especially in this environment, and then you're just protecting your entry with a stop. Nothing, nothing wrong with that one. Now I wanted to get into LEDS because this is one that I did trade personally. Uh, really powerful name. Had this uh, quick measurement, 700% move up since May. All the heavy volume bars are on up days, which is a good sight to see. Uh, since then, we pulled back 47% started to base out here. And what I should have noticed is there's a lot of these upper wicks on these candles showing that sellers stepped in at that time. Uh, once we got above, I don't know, 20, 2050 or so. See one, two, three. I mean, even down here, uh, a lot of upper wicks. So we got into kind of like a breakout on the day and then those got sold off. People were selling into the strength very quickly. So uh, I like the shakeout day on the 28th, June 28th, uh, on Monday. We shook under the eight day exponential, the 20 day simple, and under the low of the previous two days. Closed right near a, a possible buy point. So I bought this when we broke over that high of 2025. It got out, I sold 10% up, around 10%, and then it came all the way back down and hit my stop loss on the day um, for a small, I think it was like a 2% loss, 3% loss, whatever it was. Um, but th this is what I'm talking about with pivot failures. So we bought, we got over a, a just general kind of pullback, shakeout buy, got out 10%, things were looking great. And then people sold into that. And that sell off, thankfully, I always keep my stop losses. They're hard stop losses too. I don't trust myself to, to make the right choice. So we're gonna make that choice for me right when I put the trade on. 
because this fell another 20%, and you can't have 20% losses in your portfolio. It just, the math doesn't work for you. You gotta keep losses as small as possible. So for this, this one's done for now. Um, we're gonna give it a lot of time to, to set up, but I should have known with these upper wicks to take a larger percent of profit into that 10% that move. So that was on me. This is me going over a, a, a loss that I took that uh, something that I can apply to my next trade and be better. And that's, that's what this channel is about. Constant improvement. SUP, another stock that I traded personally that was on the breakout watch list. It got out on Tuesday over this buy point after a quick shakeout on Monday under some daily lows and the 20 day moving average. Got out on good volume. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't sell any of my, my stock into this. It's a 6% move, not super large. And because this was a, a really nice high tight flag pattern, I wanted to give it a little bit more room to run to kind of capture a larger gain. Kind of shame on me. I should have been taking profit a little bit quicker into that move. And then the next day, let's see if this messes anything up. Yeah, it's going to, all right. Um, so on this day when I got stopped out on Wednesday, in one minute at the open, I had my stop at my entry because we got out, I wanted to take all the risk out of the trade. So I put my stop at 880, my entry point. In one minute, at, at uh, right when the market opened, this flushed, hit my stop at 880, but I got filled at 845 because it's such a thin trading name. There must have been a bunch of stops just slightly ahead of me that had to get filled and there was no buyers. So it sunk from 880 to 845 and that's 35, about a 4% slip. And it was slightly larger position size. Um, thankfully, I took some off on Monday as we, we broke under the low here at, what was that, 867. But that, that's just tough. Either I have to move my stop even higher on these names, maybe not take them with as much size, but a 4% slip all the way down here, uh, that, was, that was a tough one to take. So, And similar with LEDS, we're now under the volume shelf, under all the moving averages. This is a, a no trade for a while here. All right, let's go back to, whoops. Current holdings. So right now, um, I have 20 positions open, 94.5% long. Uh, all of them are smaller positions because I keep trying to take these small positions, get them out 5%, move my stop to even, and then take uh, more trades, build exposure, keep the same amount of risk on. And I, I keep getting chopped up, unfortunately. Uh, so right now, I still wanna take partial profits, a third of my position at 5%, third of my position at 10%. I really got to stick to that, kind of set alerts at each of those percentages and stick to that trading plan. Uh, five position or 10 positions between five and 10%, six between three and five, and four positions really small between zero and three. Uh, what you see down here is, is just eight more smaller positions totaling 21.2%. So let's take a look at ANVS. That was my big winner on Friday. And then PRTA uh, looked healthy on Friday too. Not my largest positions, but uh, OZON is kind of pulling back. Not sure about that one right now. All right, so let's go to ANVS. If you guys are enjoying the video, please leave a like. It helps YouTube push this out to more traders, uh, and I would really appreciate that. It doesn't cost you guys anything, just one second of your time. All right, ANVS got out on a ton of volume, has this long upper wick here, and then pulls back to the eight day. This, I'm not trading. I'm letting it come up here. And then we started to kind of build this level right around the previous high. A couple times we, we tested over and then pulled back, tested over, pulled back. Um, I never took it in here just because of, I think I, I found this after the first two like breakout pullbacks here. So when it happened a third time, I was still gonna let it kind of go. I wanted a quick pullback to the 20 day moving average, which we got last week, the week before kind of pulled in here, tightened up, and then we had one, two, three, four, five, wait, one, two, three, four, yeah, four daily highs right around the same price, 87.90-ish. So on Thursday, when we moved over that, um, I bought in with a pretty large position size, over 10% of my account, um, and we, we got a really nice day on Friday, up 9%. I sold 20% of the, the stock into that move. Uh, probably should have taken a little bit more off, to be honest, because that's up 12% from my entry. But my stop's at my entry now. 
uh, taking the risk out of the trade. This one trades a little bit more than SUP, so I'm not as concerned about just a volume gap on those uh, and slippage on, on the stop loss there. But if this gets going anymore, I'll be taking some into profit, kind of keeping my, my stop at my entry, give it a little bit more room to run. Because after a strong move like this, let's see, what was it? 340%, we went through kind of like a build back up to that high, quick shake out and starting to make the turn. Now this might need another check back before going, but uh, I got a really nice low entry risk or low risk entry here, taking some profit off and move my stop up. So looking good for now. PRTA is next. Similar looking chart, a really powerful name, went up 180%, pulled back 25%, so qualifies for that high tight flag. We had an upper wick here, kind of a breakout failure. That was way too early to take the trade anyway, so I, I wasn't concerned about that. This is one one I'm watching. Um, didn't really get going with this one either, pulled back. So maybe this is kind of like LEDS where we have a couple upper wicks, but the magnitude on those upper wicks aren't as much, 7% versus like 20% on LEDS. Uh, made a nice clean turn. I, I wish this traded sideways a little bit more for the 20 day moving average to catch up like we saw with uh, ANVS, but a little early. Um, but just with a break over, uh, what day is this? Monday, the, the 28th high of 52.18 was my entry point on Thursday. Got a continuation on Friday and let's see, we're up 6%. I think I haven't moved my stop yet. I might split my stop, put half at my entry, take some of the risk out, keep half uh, where it's at around a 5% stop, and then look to take profit on Monday, partial profits on Monday if this turns up. Ideally on the outside, if you don't have a position, a quick pullback here to the eight day, to the volume shelf, and then uh, a move higher would be really nice. PRTA. All right, and now we go to completed trades. So as you can see here, um, I, I had GNK and ATNF. Those were both winning trades that were completed, but GNK was up 20% at some point. Now I was taking profit on the way up, so it was never gonna be a full 20% gain. Um, but that one checked back and hit my stop. Uh, ATNF did the same thing, came back to my entry point after a 12% move up. So I just scratched it even for the, the remaining piece. Um, and then we do have a lot of like around 5% losses. Um, and then DELL, Dell, uh, I put a really large position on that and that just came back 2% to my stop. So uh, many full stops, winners fell to my stops like I was mentioning early. And I, I still need to trade defensively because I'm not getting that same kind of traction that we're seeing the indexes get. So it's better to trade defensively, no matter what other traders are doing, how successful they are. If you're not picking the right stocks and you're not trading right, you don't wanna keep taking larger and larger positions and being wrong and wrong and wrong. You wanna be trading small at when you're kind of trading at your worst. Now I'm not trading at my worst right now, I've been going back and forth uh, each week, but I, I am trading a little bit smaller size and, and kind of taking profits quicker. Let's take a look at a couple of these, GNK. This was such, looked like such an easy trade. Um, this is a shipping company up 76%. So it doesn't qualify for that high type flag. Um, but we had this inside candle on the eighth after a little move off the, the 20 day moving average here. So I bought with the break over the high from the seventh, 1680, got going right away. Uh, one of those stocks that they start working right away, never checked back to my buy point. Um, kind of consolidated here, moved higher up, and then tons of volume getting out here. That should have, maybe I should have moved my stop up earlier, like on this day after seeing that type of volume. It's the 25th. Actually, take that back. I think that was uh, part of the rebalancing volume. But next day, another 9% down, bounced at the 20 day, consolidated a bit, but this was just, this was a bear flag that once we took out the low, that's what I need to be doing better. Once on pullbacks, give it room to, to pull back, consolidate. But once we do consolidate and then flush lower, kind of stop the trade out at the low of the previous day here, 1848, instead of, I think I had it like around here at 1738. So 
cost me a dollar per share on that. Something to take away. Still, still a, a good winner, a nice entry point, but got to keep improving, right? That's what it's all about. DELL, uh, Dell Technologies. This was a nice pattern forming through here. This is one that Leif Sereda put on his, uh, his trade as well. Look at how tight it traded through here. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight days, very, very tight trading. So I could put a 2% stop, a very large position. It got out on the day that I bought, so things were looking great. And then the next day, pulled back, didn't hit my stop, and then we gapped down and hit my stop the next day. So a 2% loss on a larger position. So that's what's gonna cause that um, $160 loss on a 2%. Um, 2% loss when you see 5.5% loss on SCU is 140, even less. But So the tighter you can keep your stops, the larger position size you can, keep, you can take, keep the same dollar risk. And then if it does work out for you and get out, then you have a large position size working for you. And that's, that's ideal. Um, but unfortunately, that stopped me out. But I'll take 2% stops uh, while the market's in an uptrend all day. All right, so that's gonna be the trading recap, June 28th to the 2nd. Uh, remember to follow me on StockTwits and Twitter. It's Stock Trick Nick on Twitter, Stock Tricks with Nick on StockTwits. Uh, I have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok as well. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out a breakout watch list tomorrow morning for the upcoming week, and then uh, I do a updated watch list during the week as well. Remember to get your two free stocks from Webull if you just uh, download the app from the link in the description below and deposit $5. First free stock is three to $300. And then with that $5 deposit, you'll get between eight and $2,000 stock. All right, see you guys tomorrow for the breakout watch list.